Today, I'm going to build these goggles that help the user see without using their eyes. Something's right here. It turns out our brains have a remarkable ability to interpret different types of input signals flexibly. As one Madison man who's been blind since birth shows us, you don't really need your eyes to see. One device that has gained some popularity is BrainPort. This device uses electrical stimulation on the tongue to translate visual data from a camera into sensory information that the brain can interpret as a form of sight. In clinical studies, users were able to recognize a variety of shapes, track objects, and in some cases, even identify faces. The lab reports of the BrainPort are impressive, but reviews seem to indicate that it struggles in real-world situations. Which makes sense. Tracking an isolated white object against a black background in a sterile environment is not the same as navigating through a cluttered room with lots of shades and shadows and light sources. It's tempting to think that once you have access to light information, building a mental model of your environment is trivial, but it's actually a huge amount of mental processing. Interpreting contrasts into edges and edges into depths while at the same time not interpreting changes in shade and reflection on the same object as a new object, it's a lot. So learning to process these inputs takes weeks of training. All this gave me an idea. What if we skip the processing required to interpret light information into depth information and just use the depth information directly? This is a RealSense depth sensor. While a normal camera delivers color information for each pixel, this sensor tells us how far away each pixel is. I want to simplify this depth information and deliver it to the user's skin. Instead of electrodes on the tongue, I want the whole device to be contained in a single pair of goggles. The goggles will be lined with vibrating motors. Whenever there's something nearby in a particular direction, the corresponding motor will vibrate, alerting the wearer to the object's presence. It's worth clarifying here that the intended use case for this device is not to be able to read nutrition facts on the side of a can of soup. This is a tool for navigating unfamiliar, dynamic environments without collisions. I've gone ahead and printed the frame of the goggles. As I research this project, I'm discovering more about vision impairment. Many legally blind people still have some vision or light sensitivity, which helps them navigate. That's why I'm making the goggles open in front of the eyes. I'm going to try a few different iterations for the vibration modules, so for now I've just printed these slots in the goggles to swap out different versions. Here are the vibrating motors. They operate at 3.3 volts and will be embedded into a flexible button-like structure that can be pushed in a few millimeters. This design will ensure that the goggles will fit comfortably onto the face, somewhat like those pin art toys. And well, while the model looks nice, the vibration is hard to sense if the button is all the way pushed. The motor's pretty much locked in place against the head. I thought having the motor vibrate along another axis might help, so I embedded a second motor, which worked a bit better, but things are getting out of hand in terms of complexity, and wiring these tiny wires with lead-free solder is more trouble than it's worth, so I'm going back to the drawing board. These vibration motors are more powerful, and I printed a module to just hold them in place, nothing fancy. I designed and printed a circuit board to control the motors. For those interested, this is an LM1117 linear voltage regulator, which drops the input voltage from 5 volts to 3.3, and each motor is controlled by a VJT transistor connected to a PWM output pin on this Raspberry Pi. I'm getting impatient and am eager to try these out. So I'm attaching the circuit board to the goggles, adding the sensor, connecting just for the motors, and fixing the processor. Now obviously this is a lot of bulk to have on one's face, and it definitely draws attention. But that's okay for today. Right now the goal is to try to make a prototype that functions. And if I can do that, then I can go back and optimize the design for wearability and aesthetics. Okay, I've got the script running on the Raspberry Pi, which is controlling the motors, and it's also sending the information over Ethernet to my computer so that you can see what the sensors see. Okay, right now I don't feel any vibrations, so hopefully there are no obstructions in front of me. And now I want to see what happens when I turn to face the wall behind me. Okay, so the vibration is starting on the left here, and the more I rotate, yeah, I feel it moving, I feel it moving across my face here. This is unbelievable. I'm going to take a step back here. Okay, now it's pretty much died down. As I take a step forward, okay, more intense, more intense. Okay, now it's going crazy. Must be right in front of me. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm opening my eyes and I'm like smack in front of the wall. Oh man, that's just wild. Oh my god. Okay, obviously not perfect. Uh, we'll talk about it, but oh, that is very promising. Okay, so obviously that was a very promising test, but there are a few changes that need to be made. The new motors did produce a stronger vibration, but since the vibration module is a single solid piece, a lot of that vibration was transferred into the entire goggle frame, making them very loud and disruptive. Also, due to the geometry of the human head, different modules had different amounts of pressure on them, which affected their vibration. So instead I made a module with a rigid part that makes contact and supports pressure against the head, while the vibration motor is positioned so that it just touches the skin, without any force that might suppress the vibration. It's connected by a thin section of plastic, allowing the motor to vibrate without affecting the rest of the goggles. To make the goggles wireless, I'll set the processor to run the script automatically on startup, and I'll send the depth information to my laptop over Wi-Fi. With those changes, it's time for a final test. 
I'm going to place these three cork boards around the apartment as trophies. My goal is to use the device to collect all three of them without colliding into anything. And to add some predictability, we're going to introduce two people to this environment, Larry the Lamp and Steven the Stepladder. I've asked my partner to place them randomly around the room, and it's time to get started. I'm spinning to get disoriented here. Whoa, switching directions made me quite dizzy. I don't know which way I'm facing, but I'm going to move my hand off of the sensor. That should get us started. Okay. Oh, oh wow. Okay, yeah, there's clearly a wall right there on my left, clearly a wall right there on my right, and as soon as I move into the center, it's it just feels open. I feel the space, though I feel gentle buzzing on both the left and the right, so it feels exactly like I'm in, in a corridor, which I know I am. Okay, here, oh, it's like a, it's like I'm in, a, in a cave, except, except right here is buzzing. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this is really wild. This is exactly the sensation I was hoping for. It's tracing along my forehead exactly like this. I can orient myself basically exactly to the obstruction in front of me, which in this case is a lamp wearing a raincoat. So, uh, sorry for touching you, sir. <laughs> Just for demonstration purposes. I'm gonna go ahead and pick up my first trophy. Cool. All right, one down. Huh, something's right here. Steven the stepladder, who knows, but I feel it, ex I mean, it's exactly here. So I'm gonna reach out and bother this person. Oh, and there it is. Steven the stepladder, right in front of me. I think this part is for me the most surprising result, is that I can absolutely tell exactly where this person is. Second trophy, I'm gonna bring that back. Going, oh, Larry the lamp snuck up on me a little bit there. I'm gonna keep going until I get a wall. And I see the walls in front of me. Okay, two down. We've got Larry right there. Got a wall over here. Coming up on Steven in a second, he's right there. I'm just gonna keep my eye on Steven so I know I don't bump into him. There's definitely a wall in front of me. That means my 3D printer should be basically here. All right, and we got the final trophy. I'll just bring that one back to the other two. Steven, there's definitely a wall. Boom, we did it. All three trophies. Come over here. <laughs> I looked in the wrong way. <laughs> You're here. Yes. All right, so I was able to successfully pick up all three of those trophies and bring them back here. The most striking takeaway for me was how clear the people were in my mental map of the world. It was it was exactly like a Skyrim dot, like a compass, indicating exactly where the people were. The walls were very obvious. That was something I could see very clearly. But the question is, could all of this be done better with a cane? I think one advantage of this device over a cane is that you don't have to make contact with whatever you are trying to detect. In the case of a wall, it doesn't really matter so much. Uh, I did get very close to both Larry and Steven's personal space, but I could see there being an advantage to being able to detect them without having to actually make physical contact with them. But overall, I think it was a really, really promising test. We'll talk about it more in the conclusion, uh, but honestly, I couldn't be more excited by how the device is performing right now. Uh, I actually covered most of it right there, but to sum it up, in terms of designing a functional proof-of-concept prototype, this was definitely a success. Next steps are to increase resolution and design for wearability, and hopefully I'll get the chance to work with some visually impaired individuals to see if this actually makes an impact on their daily lives. At the end of the day, the success of this project lies not in its technical capabilities, but on whether or not it can actually improve quality of life for the user. Let's see. That's all for today's video. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this kind of content, be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.